After having trained calisthenics for a few years, I decided it was finally time to learn how to planche. In the past three months, I've gone from being able to hold a tuck planche for like eight to 10 seconds to being able to hold it for 25 seconds. I've also increased my straight arm pushing strength and randomly got a stalled or press without working on it. Today, I'll share my journey so far, what exercises I'm doing, what exercises I try, but decided that they're just not for me and they're a waste of my time. I'll also take you through a realistic planche workout routine. The reason I'm saying it's realistic is because I decided to film this on a very busy day, which impacted my ability to really perform because I was so concerned about everything that was going on around me and not getting in the way of anybody, etc. But we'll talk more about that in a bit. Welcome, my name is Summer Fun Fitness. I'm a self-taught calisthenics athlete, meaning I have never done gymnastics. I have no professional sports background. I grew up in a very tiny town. I started incorporating planche just because I needed a new challenge. I needed to really increase my athleticism, my strength, and get better at calisthenics overall. And so planche just made the most sense for that, especially because it was an area that I'm very much a beginner in. It's probably good that I wasn't that interested in planche when I first started training it because it was only doing the one day a week. I think had I actually been set on getting my planche that very first month, I would have been training at a higher frequency and could have caused issues with my elbows or my shoulders. Because honestly, after my first first few planche workouts, my nervous system was so tired. I was so fatigued, so exhausted as soon as I would finish the workout. And then it also resulted in quite a bit of soreness. So doing the once a week for a little bit until I upped my capacity was probably a really good idea and something that I would recommend for you as well. To get the full picture of where I started and how I've adjusted, let me show you my first workout routine. I followed this for a few weeks and of course I made a little short about it. So let's just Watch that now. I just started my planche journey and here's what I did for today's workout. First warm up, then positional drills, and then the Zanetti press. I did a few extra reps on my weaker arm. Then tuck planche holds. I've decided to always accumulate two minutes of working time. Today I did 20 second intervals of a tuck planche. I'm gonna work up to 30 second intervals, then move on to a harder variation. I used a foot support when needed. To balance out all the horizontal pushing, I switched to this shoulder press variation. I almost face planted and then I performed bent arm tuck planche pushups, but I'm not strong enough to do a full rep, so I focused on lowering with control and then using a foot assist to get back up. Next, shoulder supported tuck planche lifts, which are far more difficult than they look. As I said in the video, I was committed to always doing that two minutes of accumulated hold time. And I gotta say that took up so much time when I just started learning how to planche. It would literally take me forever. I could only hold for like 10 seconds. I needed one minute to two minutes of rest in between. It took so much time. I also needed like a foot support in order to complete the total hold time. If I got really tired and I didn't want to use the foot support, I would actually just allow myself to go into a tuck L-sit position. And I know some people aren't gonna agree with me that that's the best thing to do. I know there's gonna be a few people who are like, oh, you fell out of the tuck planche, you should just stop there. But for me, I also wanted to increase my straight arm pushing strength for things like V-sits or the top of a dip, top of a muscle up and stalder presses as well. So I was very happy to increase my whole time, even though I'm no longer in a planche position. Now, fast forward a few weeks, I can do that two minutes of accumulated hold time so fast. It doesn't take up my entire workout. I can maybe do it in six to eight minutes now. Now, depending on where it falls within my week. If I'm fresh, then it's gonna be a shorter time. Maybe for you, you wanna start with one minute a whole time instead of that two minutes. It's funny, when I watch these videos, I know I'm kind of doing this journey video a little bit earlier, but I feel like from an outsider looking in, it's not gonna look like that I've made that much progress because I'm still doing a tuck plunge, but I feel so much stronger. I went from being able to hold it like the eight to 10 seconds to being able to hold it for an extended period of time. But if you're just kind of watching these and you're not super, super like staring at it, measuring angles. It's kind of gonna look like I'm doing the same thing, but in reality, I'm not. I'm way more efficient and way more strong in the tuck planche position than I was in January. I had no intention of making the planche like the major, like the top goal within my workout plan for the year, but it's kind of worked out to be that way. Being a calisthenics content creator means that I have these big film days where I'm expected to perform at a high level. I mean, I'm setting up the expectations for myself because ultimately it's my business, but I would like to perform at a higher level. And that means I need to take a rest before a film day. And then if I'm filming six to eight hours, doing so many different exercises, it dramatically impacts my ability to complete my actual workout program. So what I've done is I've kind of outlined my main goals. So for me right now, that's planche, weighted pulls, handstand push-ups, and one-arm handstands. 
inadvertently, I've fallen into this flow of being a straight arm day where it's planche focus with front lever as supplemental, and then I have a bent arm day, and then another straight arm day, and then another bent arm day. And then for the remainder of the week, I kind of just focus on miscellaneous stuff, on stuff that I am feeling weak in that I didn't cover on my film day. So that might be something like a leg day or more handstand press training, but I'm trying to like hone in and focus on the main exercises that I've selected for myself and then do all the other things, the side goals around those main things. I do wish it was more regimented, but I'm just kind of doing my best to run my own business, to create programs, to walk the dog, to eat healthy, etc. So in order to get better at the tuck planche, I really had to put effort and time in. My first goal was to be able to hit that two minutes of accumulated time nice and easily. And once I did that, I knew I needed to step things up. It kind of hit like a little plateau and then I was like, okay, we gotta make this harder. And throughout my entire journey, I've tried different exercises. I tried doing the bands. I tried things that other influencers recommend and really decided that the bands just aren't for me. They don't allow me to really connect with my lats or my body in the same way because now I'm like focused on this band. Where's this band? Where's the angle in between the band and me? And so not having the band has actually made me progress more. So I've never seen somebody do a weighted tuck punch hold, but this just made the most sense to me because I'm a very big fan of strengthening the basics, the fundamentals. And so I hit that plateau and I was like, okay, how can I make this harder? I can't actually get to the advanced tuck to get enough hold time in. So to me, adding weight just made more sense. Also, I swear it's just like a secret hack because the very first time I experimented with the weighted tuck punch hold, I was immediately able to open to straddle for the very first first time. I've never been able to open to a straddle plunge, so it felt so good. All that being said, this brings us to today's workout. My goal for this was to actually do my full workout routine and just have Ryan film it for me. So I actually got to connect with my body. I got enough warm up holds in and then the gym was so busy. So it went from like trying to connect with my body to being worried about all these people who are walking in and out of the camera and I wanted to be respectful to them and not get them in the shots. And then I was trying to figure out like, am I even in the shot? How do I adjust the next exercise? So it ended up being less than ideal. So because my performance wasn't where I wanted it to be, I actually thought about deleting this video and not even doing it, but I figured it would be good to show you that like some days you're not gonna perform at the best and that's okay. It's also gonna be like really nice to look back on this video in the future when I have a better planche and be like, oh, yes, I've come so far. I like to start with a few drills to warm up my tendons, my shoulder, and my overall connection. My left arm doesn't talk to my brain as well as my right arm. So I try and do a few extra reps there. I find I have a very tight pec on one side so that can limit my ability to really connect with my shoulder. So I just go through like a series of drills to warm up and activate the muscles that I'm going to be using in the planche. And then I like to do a bit of handstands because honestly I love handstands, but it also helps my wrist be prepared for the weight of the planche. And here I was just trying to kind of warm up my shoulders by going side to side. The first main exercise is gonna be accumulating one minute of body weight tuck planche holds. My first round, I'm always in like the smallest, tiniest little tuck ball as everything starts to kind of wake up and start to engage. And then after this, we're gonna go into one minute of the weighted tuck planche holds, which you'll see in a sec. And then I asked Ryan to join just to demo some beginner options. He hasn't trained for planche before and that's not one of his goals, but I just had him do a tucked L-sit hold and because two minutes of the tuck planche hold would be too much for his current level. At this point in the workout, I'm normally closer to an advanced tuck hold, but I was underperforming today for multiple reasons, including having done a tuck planche workout two days before. And then I went on to the accumulating one minute of a weighted tuck planche hold. And then for Ryan, I had him do a tuck planche hold, but up on higher bars so that he had more room to kind of lift his feet off the ground. I would advise that if you're a beginner. And as this person walks in front of the screen, this is where things start to get busy and I realize I'm not gonna be able to do the full workout routine and I'm just gonna have to demo the exercises. And if you're at Ryan's level and you're finding that the tuck planche hold is just too difficult nearing the end of your repetitions, then you can just drop down to the tuck L-sit hold or you can use a foot support to increase your hold time. At this point in my workout is where I would give my wrists a bit of a break. They're not sore at all, but I would like to give them a longer rest time. So what I normally do is I would go to the pull-up bar and work front lever holds, but unfortunately all the squat racks were taken and everything was chaos, so I couldn't do that. 
Hi, Editing Summer here. Because I wasn't able to show you that front lever, I filmed an additional planche exercise. What you can do is swap between the next two exercises I'm gonna show you. I wouldn't recommend doing both in a single session because that's a lot of load for your shoulders, for your elbows, and might lead to injury. Also, one of the exercises involves you having to do a handstand, so if you can't do a handstand, it's easy enough just to cross that one out and stick with the second option. Let's get into it. Here, I'm just doing negatives. I'm trying to lower into that tuck. I'm trying to actually hit six to eight second negatives for three reps, three cluster reps. The goal is to do three in a row, but sometimes when I'm tired, I have to take a break in between reps. It all just depends on the day. But in general, it's going to be working towards actually holding in that straddle planche for a second instead of just swinging down all the way to that tucked L sit. But we're gonna get better with time. For Ryan, again, I would want him to do something off his wrist, but we didn't have that available to us at this time. So I just had him work on planche leans. And then we're doing something a little bit different here. Normally this is where I would work tuck planche push-ups. I actually am very impressed with my progress with the tuck planche push-ups. I started with being able to lower down and then I needed a foot support to come back up. They're still not perfect. I'm still not maintaining the like planche lean as I push up, but I'm actually tremendously happy with the progress that I've seen on this. And then this little routine that we're doing here was shown to me by Jess St. John and I believe it was shown to her by Ashram. Sorry that I'm saying his name wrong. This is their Instagram handles. So so what we're doing is a five second tuck planche hold, five planche push-ups, three second hold, three planche push-ups, and then a one second hold and a one rep of the push-up. For Ryan in place of this exercise, I just had him do extended range of motion push-ups. And then onto our last exercise for today, we're gonna be doing some dragon flags. I have a short video all about how to do that as well as a blog post. I will put it in the description box below. I'm super happy with my dragon flag progress. When I filmed that video, that tutorial on how to dragon flag, I could only do like two full reps. And then I went from a tuck hold to a half lay hold because that's the same positioning that I will want to use in my planche one day. One day I'll want to go from the advanced tuck to a half lay. Same with the front lever. I'm going to want to go to a half lay one day. So I worked that within my dragon flags. And then Ryan just did a tuck version. You want to feel the engagement through your lats and stay nice and strong and not collapse at the bottom position. And that's my progress that I've made in the last three months of training for the planche. I cannot wait for the day that I can actually do the advanced tuck hold. The difference between the tuck and the advanced tuck is so small, but the uncurling of your spine takes tremendous effort and just one day it's gonna be easy. And I'm very excited for that day. I hope you learned a thing or two within this video. Let me know what your goals are. And if you want some help with some other high level calisthenic skills, check out my human flag workout. It's right here. Or if you're just a beginner, here are two upper body workouts that you can follow. Thank you so much for being here.